Good evening, guys. I'd like to introduce myself first. Uh, I'm uh, James Hotti Vicente Alves. I'm a professional electronics engineer, and uh, my exclusive line for my profession I broadcasting, consultancy mainly. I've done consultancy for both local and international companies. I also taught uh, broadcast engineering and applied acoustics sa Makua Institute of Technology then. And then later on is uh, Makua University. Ako din ang chairman ng industry advisory board <coughs> ng Adamson University. So, yun. Uh, Nung isang araw ko pa iniisip itong mag-live uh, <coughs> to dispel kasi yung mga misunderstanding about uh, digital broadcasting. Uh, at doon sa mga pangyayari sa ating industriya, ng broadcasting dito sa Pilipinas. <coughs> so I decided to modify yung mga existing uh, presentation slides go and some of them are, are training slides that I did for some private companies. So this is pretty common for me. <clears throat> yeah. So you want to start now presentation to be okay. Okay. So at the yung photo uh, it's uh, an award I received from the IPU Associations uh, Japan, Tokyo, Japan. This was in 2012, I think. Is it <laughs> May 2012? Yeah. So, ako lang yung Filipino dyan. This is mainly for my activities in uh, promoting digital TV uh, broadcasting technology, not only in the Philippines but also around the world. Uh, I've, I've done my promotion also in Thailand. Vietnam, uh, was in India, and then I've gone as far as uh, South Africa. <clears throat> and then on the same year, I received the Asia Pacific Broadcasting Union's uh, Broadcasting Industry Excellence Award 2012 in Seoul, Korea. Yung ABU is the biggest broadcast union in the world <clears throat> so that consists of uh, asia pacific nations so sa side natin and then ang ganda sa north and south american side kasama ng union yan. so i got the uh, top award there and <clears throat> i was fortunate enough na nandoon ang buong kbp uh, board sa ab convention na to. And they were able to witness your award so, kailangan ko lang i-highlight yung <clears throat> mga ilang salient uh, points na to, minor achievements ko, to lay down the foundation para doon sa ating pag-uusapan. <clears throat> and then doon sa mga naguguluhan, hindi maintindihan kung ano yung digital TV, nagkaligaw-ligaw na. Um, people misunderstand, people uh, get confused and say the wrong things. <clears throat> So, I have uh, a book that I co-authored with uh, Mr. Uh, Yasuo Takahashi, the chairman, former chairman of the Digital Broadcast Experts Group, or DIBEG, <coughs> at si MIC Director <coughs> Masayuki Ito. So, available siya sa Amazon. Uh, I think it's more expensive sa Amazon than you order directly dito sa atin sa Pilipinas. Plus, you get the autograph of the authors. Pag sa Amazon mo lang. Moving on. <clears throat> so, to give you a picture ng direction ng broadcasting, uh, start natin sa 48. So, London Olympics <clears throat> in black and white. And then, ng 64, Tokyo Olympics in first colored na coverage. And then, ng 84, 
papansin nyo, Los Angeles Olympics, tape in high definition. <coughs> Iba sa inyo, katanungin, 84 may high definition. Totoo yan. Kasi yung colleague ko, yung pinaka uh, uh, partner ko sa mga activities sa Pilipinas for digital TV education, training, uh, technology transfer, si Mr. Junji Kumada. Patented high definition in 78-79, I think. So meron na, no? Pero in this case, tinape lang siya. Kasi the current capability to do transmission over the air, terrestrial, wala pa. <coughs> analog na, analog tayo. No? Then, moving on. 1988, Seoul Olympics was the first live broadcast. So any Olympics coverage, 88 and below, uh, taped siya or delayed broadcast. So nung 88 lang nangyari yung live uh, broadcasting. And then we moved to 2008, Beijing Olympics is the first uh, international broadcast in high definition. So 2008 na to kasi meron ng mga digital broadcast. Digital broadcasting in Europe, in North America, uh, started in 1998, yung experimentations and promotions. And then sa East Asia, sa Japan, nag-start siya ng 2003. So 2008, ginagamit na siya ng mga ibang uh, nation. And then noong 2012, papansin niyo sa London Olympics, merong note dyan na SHB Public Screening. SHB means super high vision or super high definition. 2016, Rio Olympics, and then sa Tokyo Olympics, which is supposed to be this year, <coughs> ay ang uh, full super high vision or super high definition coverage ng Olympics. So, mapapansin nyo, every Olympics merong new milestone sa broadcasting. Diyan kasi ang pinakamagandang i-showcase mo yung new technology. Japan was ready for super high definition even in 2008. But then lagi silang natatalo sa bidding sa pag-host ng Olympics. <clears throat> so na-delay na-delay. And then they are planning to fully launch super high definition uh, this year. But I don't think it will happen because of the COVID-19. We'll go to, the, to that later on it. What is super high vision or super high definition? <clears throat> okay. So, sa analog broadcasting, I'm talking about the Philippines here. Ito yung scenario natin. Dalawa lang naman yung portion yan. Yung baseband portion. <clears throat> and then yung RF portion or transmission. Okay. So, naggumawa ko ng isang simpleng explanation. So, yung violet dyan, yung sa leftmost yung muna, indicates program sources. So, ano ba yung mga program sources? It can be uh, yung galing sa studio, galing sa camera, uh, galing sa server, galing sa tape. Any audio video that has been captured and ready for delivery, kasama yan sa mga program sources. Nilagay ko rin dyan yung mga galing sa mga field uh, broadcast. So, tawag natin dyan outside broadcast. Meron tayong electronic news gathering. Ito yung vans that you see that goes outside and then has a telescopic boom with a microwave link uh, on top that intends to relay whatever is captured by the electronic uh, news gathering to transmit live to the station and then the station transmits it. So, that is still considered as a program source. The same is true with satellite news gathering. Instead of a simple telescopic boom with the microwave on top, this time you're using satellite links to deliver the same uh, concept. Also for uh, microwave links, streaming sources, and wire services. Now when we say wire services, these are international feeds coming from maybe Associated Press, CNN, those kind of stuffs. Uh, news organizations in the Philippines buy those kind of contents and we classify them as wire services that we can 
attached to our regular broadcast as an additional uh, news and info. And then we have offline contents also, uh, like the commercials, the advertisements. Uh, yep. <clears throat> so medyo nag-duplicate pa hindi ko pala na-edit. And then all of these program sources will have to be forwarded to the process, processing and routing stage. Diyan, diyan yung, yung master control. The master control will select which one will be fed for transmission. And then uh, under that, meron kang microwave links. Let's say if you have a remote studio going to the head office or um, other sources, streaming, microwave links, fiber, yeah, kasama rin yan, telecommunication links. And then uh, nandito rin yung part ng editing, post-production, calibration. So hindi ko na ako kompletuhin lahat, but it gives you an idea that the program sources are the contents, the process and the routing would be uh, to enhance, to improve the quality of the video and the audio, to add some effects and during the process. Na yan. Now, when we go to transmissions, analog, which is indicated in blue, usually the lower lang naman yung transmission mode na gagawin. Isa is via satellite so that you can feed multiple relay stations around the country with the same content. But then, those sa transmission, you can only have one sa analog broadcasting. So regardless how many program sources you have, the process, the routing, the master control will only select one for transmission. Yan yung scenario natin sa analog. Now, clarify ko lang. Those are program sources natin at sa routing, it can be both analog and digital sources. Kasi kung may analog camera, analog VTR tape, or digital camera, digital video tape, servers, etc. Pagdating sa dulo niyan, it will be purely analog doon sa transmission. <clears throat> Hindi pwedeng digital eh. Okay. Tingnan natin yung scenario. Sino yung mga uh, nagta-transmit sa over the air? So I'm using NCR as an example because we cannot, I cannot present the, all the broadcasters nationwide. It will create more confusion rather than understanding. But uh, the Metro Manila example will serve <clears throat> as uh, a good reference already. So we have the VHF band. In the VHF, you have ABS-CBN Broadcasting, People's Television Network, Government Network, ABC Development or TB5 or Associate Broadcasting Corporation. They are the ones in the low band VHF in Metro Manila, channel 2, 4, 5, okay? And then on the high band VHF, you have GMA Network, Radio Philippines Network, Zoe Broadcasting, and uh, Intercontinental Broadcasting Corporation, VHF. Okay, just to add up, etong seven, these seven broadcasters, because all broadcast services in the Philippines are being encouraged by the National Telecommunications Commission and the national government to shift to digital. So these seven VHF networks, Works, will be given a transitional channel in the UHF band for digital operation that would allow them to have parallel broadcast. Okay? Ibig sabihin ng parallel broadcast, sabay yung analog and digital nila. <clears throat> okay. Now we go to the UHF uh, part. So you have Channel 21, Southern Broadcasting Network, SBN 21. And then you have uh, Amkara, which is channel 23. And then you have Eagle Broadcasting, channel 25, or what we call Net 25. Channel 27 is under Republic Broadcasting System, or GMA Network, in channel 27. And then channel 29, uh, Raja Broadcasting Network. Channel 31, Radio Mindanao Network, which is, kung nanonood kayo sa channel 31, yun yung beam. And then channel 33 is Zoe Broadcasting. Channel 35 is Delta Broadcasting System. So, maring hindi niyo pa narinig yung uh, Delta Broadcasting. Uh, kay, ano po siya, kay Brother Mike Villardi sa Kelsey Diffusion. 
Uh, shout out nga pala kay uh, President and CEO ng Naughty Cafe, Kevin Asunto. Nag-flash lang po sa screen. And then uh, Progressive Broadcasting, Channel 37. And then Masawa Broadcasting, Channel 39. Which is yung Sunshine kay uh, Mr. Tibuloy. Channel 41, Nation Broadcasting. Channel 43, Mareco Broadcasting. Channel 45, Gateway UHF. Channel 47, ABC Development. Channel 49, Christian Era Broadcasting Services. And Channel 51, GB Broadcasting. So dito sa mga nabanggit kong station sa UHF, kung mapapansin nyo, puro ad numbers yung channel na ginagamit. Though the even numbers are unused, unutilized because uh, they serve as some sort of a guard band. We call them taboo channel. You cannot use them because it would create undue interference to an existing and operating station in your upper and your lower. So for example, let's say channel 30, uh, channel 41. Kung si channel 41, we would allow the use of channel 40 and channel 42. Uh, magkakaroon sila ng interference. Okay. So, so in analog, there is an inherent uh, uh, inefficiency. Let's say that if you have this certain X number of uh, bandwidth that is allocated for a specific service, you can only use half of it and the, half, the other half would serve as guard bands. So, yun. That's one of the major reasons why we went to digital, not only the Philippines, but the other countries around the world, and the various broadcast unions pushed for digital to increase the efficiency. Good evening, uh, ating uh, outstanding uh, ECE uh, last year, uh, Don is cute, Calabo. Uh, please feel free to share to our friends in uh, ISEP Kata. Good evening, say. <clears throat> okay, so ito ngayon yung Unref Analog Channel to Program Illustration. Dito kasi maraming nalito eh. Parang gusto kong tumayo tuloy pagdating sa aspeto nito. So yung mga program sources, pumunta sa process and routing and then transmission. It's the transmission portion kaninang slide ko. Treat them as one of the networks on your leftmost portion. So you have the output, the single output of ABS-CBN, PTV, TV5, GMA, RPN, Zoe, and IBC. That program that has been selected for transmission will have to fit into a 6 megahertz channel. Okay? Now, yung title dito ng slide to is RF Analog Channel to Program Illustration, which means the program, one that one program of this networks that I've highlighted on your leftmost will have to fit into, down the center, into a 6 megahertz channel. That's why all of these networks can only have one program that can fit into that 6 megahertz channel that will then be transmitted. <clears throat> so, down the rightmost uh, portion dito, nakalagay, one program per time slot. <clears throat> A new scenario. So in this example, you have seven TV stations. Then what you can receive at the end, us as viewers, are only seven programs. And then if you look at the bottom, you'll see there channel two, blue, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. Those are the active channels. Those in red represents unused spectrum because they serve as guard band. Now, in between channel 4 and 5, there is this 4 megahertz band used for uh, radio communication. So, yan. Malinaw po ito. Okay. So, su sumusulyap-sulyap lang po ako sa mga questions. Pero if you feel that you don't understand or you need further clarification, you can post your question and then I'll try to answer them. Okay, wala pong nag-volunteer na mag-assist sa akin dito. <clears throat> okay, example number two. This is on the UHF band. Okay, so same thing. Um, tingnan nyo ngayon sa baba. Mas marami na siyang red. 
Okay? So when I counted, we have 16 channels that are currently being used, and there's 15 that is not utilized. Okay, actually, si channel 35, non-operational siya. But because of an active franchise, nilagay ko na siya group. So this further highlights the spectral inefficiency of analog broadcasting. This translates to wasted spectrum, wasted natural resource. So digital TV would allow us to increase the efficiency of the use of the spectrum, then thereby allowing government to earn more from the use of this limited uh, natural resource diba? and better services for the viewers if we have more uh, choice of contents. Okay. If we compare analog and digital, uh, there's no match talaga in comparison because uh, digital would maintain perfect signal all the time for as long as you satisfy certain criteria for reception. Meanwhile, in analog, you have this uh, good signal and then slow degradation of signal with respect to the signal level or your location with respect to the transmitting station. Which means when you go farther away, the signal deteriorates. <clears throat> the same with your the quality of uh, video that you're watching. Okay. Now, when it comes to a uh, oh, shout out to mga master control system, Ernest, Mark, 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 Gab, Dean, Carl, and Jan. Boy, kayo sa trabaho at uh, doubling sweldo yung araw-araw. Napasulyap lang po ulit ako. So, sa digital, you have perfect uh, signal all the time. But if you fail to satisfy the signal level criteria, the modulation error rate, or the constellation care to noise, then suddenly the signal disappears. There is no so slow degradation in digital. Okay, now we go to digital. Now, if you notice the same yung illustration, you have the baseband info, which will be transmitted to the RF or relay to the trans to the, to the transmission. Now you'll see here the program sources and the process, which is almost the same with the analog, except that I have an addition here. We have the head end operations. Okay. Now going into digital, you need a head end. The head end basically will have your multiplexer is based on an MPEG-2 system, okay, and then several encoders, okay. So the MPEG-2 system will provide you the multiplexing scheme. The other encoders, which is the H.264, is for your video and audio compression. So let's make a distinction between the two. So there's an existing MPEG-2 video and audio compression. In this case, we're using the MPEG-2 system as a platform for compressed video in MPEG-4 or H.264 in this illustration uh, para ma-multiplex natin siya. Okay? I hope you can follow, guys. So, we're using MPEG-4 or H.264 for the video compression. Okay? You can use H.265 also. That's a... a, a more recent compression technique. But in our case, in the Philippines, we're going to use uh, MPEG-4 H.264. You will notice also there is a BNL server and EWBS at the bottom. Those are extra features in ISDBT, uh, the standard we're using in the Philippines. Now, when we go to transmission, I'll focus on terrestrial TV or free-to-air, which is labeled here as ISDBT. Now you'll see... <clears throat> A while ago, in analog, you can only transmit one program in one channel, 6 megahertz. Okay? Malinaw. One program in one channel in analog. In digital, you have one channel, but you can have, okay, one one seg, which is your portable TV, your low resolution for small screens, or two high-definition feeds. Now, if you don't want high definition, you can go up to 8 standard definition. 
Now, if you can mix and match, you can have one high definition plus four standard definition. Okay? So, I hope malinaw or may idea kayo kung anong difference ng high definition at standard definition. Okay? So, tanong ni John Patrick Lumbria, how many HD channels ang pwede sa ISDBT? If it's me, I will limit it into two on MPEG-4 or H.264 compression. But there are ways to increase the number, but then, uh, ang recommended is two high definition. For <clears throat> For standard definition, up to 8. I have yet to see a broadcaster in the Philippines that actually squeezes 8 program. Uh, right now, I think there's 6 or 7 uh, in a particular network. So, yan yung potential. Did we violate the 6 megahertz or one channel rule? No. The technology simply allows the broadcaster to optimize the use of their channel capacity. In analog, we used to call them just a channel uh, in terms of frequency. But when we go to digital, that bandwidth, that frequency, is translated into some sort of channel capacity because of the data coding capability. Okay. So, yun. <clears throat> so, nabanggit dito ng ating kaibigan si Jildin Peñas. Sabi niya, ah, kaya pala PTV da, about dalawang HD, isang SD. So, ito, nabanggit na tuloy na uh, dalawang HD, isang SD, na squeeze pa rin. Pwede pa kasi. Okay, pero that's not part of our presentation. Now. <clears throat> next. Okay, ang next slide. <clears throat> RF analog and digital channel allocation. Ito na yung pinaghalo ko na yata. Tama ba? Yep, pinaghalo ko na yung analog ng digital. So, yung nasa left side natin, which is the VHF, mapapansin sila yung 7 VHF. Binigyan na sila, uh, ito kayo mouse, ito. Binigyan na sila ng nationwide DTV channel allocation. Okay? So, si PTV got channel 14, si GMA got 15, ABS event got 16, IBC got 17, TV5 got 18, RPN 19, and then Zoe channel 20. So they can use this frequency nationwide without any fear of getting an interference <coughs> or the problem of getting a digital channel. Uh, yeah, now, when we go to the right side, Ah, sorry. Dagdagan ko pa. Itong from channels 14 to 20, yung mga broadcasters diyan eh, are treated as primary coming from the VHF. They have the right to have uh, a transitional channel. Now, if we go to the right, the existing UHF stations are operating on the, what we call the secondary purpose. They can only apply for uh, a simulcast, a transitional channel, if there is an available spectrum or available channel. Okay? So the idea is those in the secondary purpose, if they want to go to digital, they should terminate their analog and then use the same channel for their digital service. So those highlighted in blue, which is the right side, are existing and operating in digital. So imagine in NCR, we have this much number of... Uh, digital TV service already. Okay. Ito na isang example ko. So, I use uh, PTV, GMA, and ABS-CBN as an example. The order here is based on the channel 14 to 20 allocation. Since the size of the screen is limited for the space, so I use the three as an example. If you see here, Currently, PTV in Metro Manila, <clears throat> in one channel, in a 6 megahertz channel, they are generating uh, one HD and then two SD programs plus one SEG with data broadcast and EWBS. EWBS stands for Emergency Warning Broadcasting System. So, matagal-tagal na itong nag-exist natin. It's a matter of utilization uh, that would further benefit uh, our people 
uh, in terms of uh, relevant and uh, urgent news that needs to be delivered to the people. Next example, GMA in one channel, which is in this case, channel uh, 15. I think PT, PTB, sa example, kung ginagamit pa nila is channel 42. Hindi pa nila ginagamit yung channel 14. GMA in this example uses channel 15 uh, in the nationwide DTV channel allocation. They have, I think, two programs in standard definition uh, with one sec. They don't have the data as and the emergency warning broadcasting capability as of yet, as far as I know. Okay. And then for ABS-CBN, so they have channel 16, but because of the cease and desist, so they have to stop using channel 16. However, they're still on air. They're using uh, another channel, okay, which I will show to you later, your RF uh, scan. So they have, I think, uh, six or seven programs. Okay, So they have the data cast. Yung sa remote control, I think you need to press the yellow button para, so you can access the data cast of ABS-CBN and the emergency warning broadcast system, okay, and so on and so so forth. Si Gerald Egarde ay nagahamon ng beer pong. So sa mga mapuwan dyan na hinahamon nito, baka gusto yung labanan. <clears throat> okay. So in this case, RF Digital Channel to Program Illustration, so UHF channels to, the same, the name of the station, one channel, six megahertz, and then if you look at the right side, those who are operating in digital now can go with eight programs, standard definition, <clears throat> or two high definition, or combination. Okay? And then, pagdating dito sa bandang ipaba, notice, I've highlighted those in digital now in white. So you have channel 21, 26, 29, 30, 33, 38, 40, 42, 43, 47, 49, 50, 51. So 32 channels, be, 20, sorry, 23 channels being used and 8 unused. So hindi pag fully utilized lahat. But you can see here significant increase in the use of the limited spectrum. Our target is mainly to have full utilization, 100% utilization of this spectrum. Diba? Cyan in capacity. Okay. Nations around the world have already started their transition and full migration to digital TV. That includes the Philippines. So if you see yung sa map dito, we've been doing digital broadcasting tests uh, since 2008-2009, tagal na tayo magka-trial. In fact, the committee, the first technical working group for digital TV was was formed, uh, I think, in 2004-2005 uh, through the Society of Broadcast Engineers and Technicians of the Philippines at that time in cooperation with the NPs for that. Okay, when it comes to compression techniques, here are the standards when they were standardized, the designation, and all of these resources are freely accessible online. So if you want to learn more about MPEG-1, uh, the one used in BCD, MPEG-2, MPEG-4, up to H.265. So H.265, you cannot use MPEG-5. There's a designation already. So there is an ITU designation and there's this ISO IEC designation, but they're talking of the same thing. Tinuturo ko to sa classes ko nun sa Mapuwan. Because some people, they get confused with the naming convention. Kung maka-ITU pa or kung maka-ISO IEC. Okay. Ito na interesting. In the picture format and resolution comparison, so, we have uh, here the lines and the pixels. So, the concept is 
the more pixels and the more lines of information in a particular video, the higher resolution or the higher the detail, the higher quality. <coughs> so notice in one seg, the number of lines is 240 by 352 pixels. So every line, okay, every line will have 352 pixels. And you have 240 lines from top to bottom. So yun lang yung resolution niya. And that resolution is only good for screens na ganito kaliit. Or if your mobile phone is capable of receiving one seg services. The intention then, why one seg was included in the development of ISDB2, is that not everybody will be able to bring a TV to watch when they are commuting, going to school, in a bus, in the train, di ba? or just outside the house, but you still wanted to watch. So they developed this feature, a lower resolution intended for small screens. So that, uh, anyway, if the screen is small, so it should be tolerable. Okay, that's the yellow square in the illustration. Okay. okay. Next is the standard definition. The standard definition here, we have 480 lines from top to the bottom of your screen, and each line will have 720 pixels. Okay? So, yun yung quality niya, yun yung resolution. And that is indicated by the red square. And then we go to high definition. High definition will be 1080, 1080 lines from top to bottom, and then 1920 pixels or 1440 pixels per line that defines the high definition okay and that is represented by the broken lines the blue well that well broken lines na itim na ang gitna niya ay blue so imagine ang current broadcast setup ng mga stations sa atin ay yung doong red square lang standard definition we urge them to go to high definition doon so broken black lines na blue yung fill color niya yun yung high definition meanwhile the rest of the world are going to 4k which is yung green green area okay at ibang countries nag test na sila no kulay violet which is 8k Yan yung kanina nabanggit ko, yung super high vision or super high definition. That is equivalent to 16 high definition. You go, imagine the quality of 16 times of high definition. That's your 8K. So medyo nahuhuli na nga tayo, di ba? So at least let's push for HD. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, features of ISDBT, all the digital broadcasting technology used in the Philippines. So it's capable of delivering high definition, multiple standard definition programming or combination. It has the data broadcasting uh, feature, which uh, it can watch PTV and ABS-CBN. They have the data broadcast. So you can access additional information about the weather, maybe traffic some uh, cooking information, some breaking news <coughs> that is not part of the linear broadcast. <coughs> Sorry. Then the red one shows you emergency warning broadcast system. So as of the moment, two networks are capable, PTV and ABS-CBN. And yung mga succeeding test natin, they're both operating. And then yung green would be capability to support interactive services. So no one is doing this in the Philippines at the moment because of you need connectivity to have the interactivity. Uh, good evening, uh, kapatid, uh, Alex Kabatit, uh, Joel Ong. Uh, si Joel Ong po, isa po sa bumili ng libro ko. Isa sa mga unang bumili. Okay. So description about ISDBT band segmentation. ISDBT is called band segmented transmission of orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. So never mind that Kung if you're not an engineer. So let's just say you have a six megahertz bandwidth. You put 
200 kilohertz guard band from the sa start and then at the end so you'll have 400 kilohertz of unused uh, capacity so you can only use 5.6 uh in isdbt okay the red one in the middle is what we call one segment it's, it's meant to deliver audio video on this de small device i'm talking about the screen size not the device itself although this is a one seg receiver but uh anyway you get the point so lower uh capacity lower resolution and then the blue blocks represents the number of segments that can be used for full segment so i'll give you an example here uh 430 kilohertz per segment multiplied by 12 that's equivalent to 5.169 megahertz of channel capacity yun lang yung doon mo ikakarga yung hd or sd the data has and the ewbs uh, services next for the essential features so these are uh, very important so there are certain features like the bandwidth capability six seven or eight megahertz for isdbt now of course the, the theory of communication natin, engineering is that the more bandwidth you have the more capacity that's why i made an illustration here that if you increase the bandwidth of course we can deliver more services higher data rate okay <clears throat> so that is defined by the limit of which one is being used if it's six seven or eight and then next is the code rate <clears throat> so it's a code rate or fec for the error correction <clears throat> we can only have one half two thirds three fourths five six and seven eight in my illustration here for the code rate then so one half you have one blue and one orange which means in every bit of information that you transmit the orange one represents the parity or the error correction code thereby one half gives you the highest robustness in terms of the preservation of the integrity of the information <clears throat> next is two thirds in every two bits of information you have one parity information and then so on until we reach seven eight you have seven information one parity now if you're going to ask me which one has the highest robustness uh, in terms of preserving the integrity of the data then that's one half seven eight will give you the highest coding capacity but the least robust uh, in terms of uh, preserving the nature or the state of the data okay okay tayo dito guys ha simple so if it's one half medyo mahirap ma-confuse ma-interfere mawala yung original information but you have less uh, coding capacity the 780 have the highest coding capacity but then you need to further reinforce <coughs> the coding so that you can preserve the state if it's one or zero <clears throat> next <clears throat> continuation on uh, essential parameters we have here the guard band okay your guard band is a parameter that defines the maximum distance you can use for as a reference to where you will put your next transmitter because in analog you can normally have one transmitter per service area if you add more uh, transmission in the same frequency you will interfere yourself but in digital you can reinforce your signal for as long as you satisfy the guard interval the guard interval is expressed in uh, microseconds so i have here one fourth which is 252 microseconds so since we know the speed of light, diba? three times 10 to the eight okay? uh, meters per second. And then you have here one fourth represented by 252 microseconds by multiplying them, doing the ratio in proportion if you want, you can get the distance. <clears throat> and then one fourth will give you uh, 75.6 kilometers, which means if you want to put up two transmitters using the same frequency in digital, 
the maximum distance for the both transmitter would be 75.6 kilometers and they will not create any interference in this illustration i have here this point it's a northern part with respect to this uh, manila for as long as the distance is equal or less than 75.6 at one port guard interval that's okay wala interference the same is true dito sa northern at papunta doon sa southernmost point dito sa illustration ko it should be equal or less than the guard interval now also the guard interval represented well not represented actually takes away the useful duration of the signal. So if you say one fourth, it actually takes one fourth of the time of the uh, availability of the signal, <clears throat> which in turn takes useful capacity. And if you'll notice, if I use one eight guard interval, I have freed up one eight to add to the actual channel capacity. But then, I cut the distance between the two transmitter points into half, which is 37.8 kilometers na lang. Which means, I have to put my transmitters, digital transmitters, closer to each other. If I use uh, one eight guard interval. And the same goes if I go to 116 to 132. You'll see here, paliit ng paliit yung... Uh, duration time duration so at 116 is 63 microseconds and that's 18.9 kilometers that's virtually from Quezon City to Paranaque so if I want to create an SFN for Metro Manila using uh, 116 guard interval then uh, I cannot put my next transmitter outside Paranaque Kasi if I, the moment I get out of the guard interval length, it would create interference. Yeah, same essential uh, parameters. Of course, you have to strike a balance, which is more important to you. Uh, greater distances for your SFN means you have a big SFN, but lesser capacity or you need more capacity. Now, this, this parameter applies if you have an SFN multiple transmitter. If you have a single transmitter, then it's less likely that you will need this. With uh, an exception, that a reflected signal is treated as another transmission, which means a signal that bounces on a building or a mountain when it reaches a same, the same destination, a same receiver, panrel. Ito yung transmit ito yung nag-bound sa bundo. Pagpunta niya rito at nag-meet sila sa exerted receiver, if the reflected signal violates the guard interval, it would create interference. Okay. So, medyo <clears throat> malalim siguro ito. No? Lampas-lampasan natin ang konti. No? Medyo kailangan namnamin mo mabuti ito. Okay. Reception tools. So, of course, you need a test instrument. Uh, this portable one is the cheapest. Uh, it's an LC50W from DX Antenna Philippines. I think it costs around 25,000 pesos. I think it has the 5G and 4G capabilities. Kind of. And then for antennas, you can have uh, three element and then the standard 14 element Yagi antenna. Okay. Um, for those people living in North Caloocan, uh, northeastern part of Quezon City, medyo mahina ang signal po dyan sa lugar niyo. So if you're using conventional whip antenna or your magnetic antenna, I doubt you can get good signal. Uh, it is always recommended that you have an external roof-mounted antenna for reception. <clears throat> okay. For... Segment capacity and the total data rate I've included here in the table. So, depending uh, on the coding and the constellation, 
So of course, QPSK will give you the lowest uh, data rate, but the uh, highest robustness, and then 64COM would give you the highest uh, uh, data rate. So ISDBT is capable of providing you the smallest would be 3.651 uh, megabits per second if you utilize one fourth code rate. Ah, sorry, one fourth guard interval, one half uh, code rate or FEC, and then QPSK. That's only good for one program. But if you want to use the maximum, that is 23.23 23 megabits per second. The configuration would be 132 guard interval, 64 quam, and then 78. This would give you eight, at least eight. Euro. You can push up to nine programs, standard definition, or maybe two HD, two SD, depending on the compression ratio. So you have to strike a balance uh, in the data rate with the parameters that you have here. So this slide greatly helps the people or the engineers to manage without doing the actual calculation. He crisscross, crisscross. So this information is, uh, is available on dibeg.org website, dibeg. Uh, the standard is arrive standard B31. So you can get this table there. Okay, <clears throat> ISDBT is designed to support reception or fixed reception, TV reception at home, reception when you are in a moving vehicle, bus, train, car, even bicycle, motorcycle, but of course you're not supposed to be watching TV. <coughs> and then portable, all in one transmission, in one channel, you can do all of this. Okay, niwasan po natin yung controversy and misunderstanding of uh, some parties regarding channel and program. So sana po makadagdag po tayo sa kaalaman at bawasan natin ang kamangmangan sa lipunan. <clears throat> Good evening, Risa. Uh, Risa Hilario is uh, an ECE student. She's currently in, in, in Japan. Okay, spectrum. So channel 14 to 20 green, we know that this is already PA. It has been allocated to the BHF stations. Channel 21 to 51, our intention is to have it full, full use for digital to be utilized fully. <clears throat> uh, according to the migration plan of the DICT, we only have I think, two or three years left for the termination of analog services. Hi, Kyle. Okay, next. I've already explained this, but this, I guess, will be more graphic. In one 6 megahertz channel in analog, you can only have one program. If we go in digital, option one, I can have two high definition plus two handheld. Or next option, I have an HD program, multiple standard definition and handheld. And then lastly, pure standard definition services. So you can choose between the three combinations. So baka isipin nyo, nasaan yung data casting in EWBS? They don't consume much data actually. So they're almost insignificant in terms of the actual data rate requirement of the video services. Good evening, uh, ang ating uh, LiDAR mapping GIS expert, si CJ Sim. Ang um, aking inaanak, si Ras Rigor. Good evening. Digital TV and ISDBT 
is designed to work in hard, uh, not hard, but a difficult environment to receive signal. This kind of environment would be almost impossible for an analog TV service to have a stable reception. Digital, to the use of uh, OFDM technology, or orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, allows uh, reinforcement and recognition of multiple signals, uh, delayed signals due to reflection and uh, propagation to be the same signal for as long as you maintain, let's say, the guard intervals, an example to come. So we call it the severe receiving condition. Next is the spectral efficiency. Analog is what we call the peak of sync uh, type of transmission that uh, a certain station will need to trans use a 50 kilowatt transmitter to attain, let's say, 200 or 400 kilowatts of ERP to maintain a certain coverage with acceptable uh, quality. Now, in digital, that the requirement is one-tenth only to 10 dB down. So, a 10 kilowatt transmitter would be as good, let's say, a 10 kilowatt transmitter with a 10 dB gain antenna will be able to cover the same area of a broadcaster transmitting um, at 100 kilowatts uh, with around uh, 8 to 10 dB of gain. The, the coverage will be virtually the same, which means digital TV will provide us better uh, energy utilization. Good evening, uh, Je, my future in Anna. So yung mga benefits natin, di ba? Um, better picture, lower power consumption, more programs, di ba? And then, efficient use of the spectrum, there are less taboo channels. So ito pala yung example ko, some of the trainings that we have done, we have the people in the broadcast industry, the ABS, CBN, GMA, and then channel 4, 5, 9, 11, 13, 21, up to 51, sama-sama kami sa isang event. The common idea is to learn more about digital TV. I think this demonstration was done in 2010, 2011. Yeah. This is the equipment of People's Television Network. They've been ready for digital since 2010, I believe. Okay, they have this full equipment. Next is data broadcasting. One of the features of ISDBT that you can actually embed on top of the video layer and XHTML. We call it the BML or Broadcast Markup Language, but essentially it's XHTML. <coughs> These are examples of BML. So while watching TV, when you press a certain button on your remote, on the on top is the feature in TV Plus. So you can access a certain nanay bida. Uh, weather. Okay. This is on your TV. Then the one on the left bottom will be the PTV BML like an announcement from the Office of the President. And then some example on about traffic, also from PTV uh, on the right bottom part. This is the one, uh, full, bone, full, full bone implementation in, the, in Japan. So you can have the weather, sport, news on top of the video layer without overlapping, without going on top of the video. You thereby minimize the video. So you don't miss anything on the video layer. And then you can look at the data layer. Hi, my inaana actress. And Jukes, kumusta na? This is also a data cast uh, related to sports. So kung basketball, I don't know kung ano layer, paano appearance, or kung boxing, gathering niya. Now, this is an example of a warning, emergency warning broadcast. 
Um, we've, we've had several trials already. This one is courtesy of ABS-CBN. They've been very cooperative in delivering the, the drill, the warning. Lumabas yan sa mga TV class nila. So, depending sa location nyo, wherever you live, there's an instruction where to go in times of emergency. Get for health assistance, food, rescue. Those are typical examples. Good evening, uh, Jomar Keanu. Good evening, Christian Lopez. John Wenzen Samano. Ating kapatid si George Arguelles. Nine. Emergency warning broadcast system. Okay. So, meron tayong demo video para dyan. Ito yung sa Japan. Kasi what we need in an emergency warning system is it, is it needs to be real time. It cannot be uh, a newscast, a flash report. Because a flash report tells you about the news that has happened many minutes ago or hours ago. It's delayed. The reason why it's delayed is because some people need to collect the information to prepare the script to brief the journalist who will go on cam about the news. So those takes a lot of time. So in a real emergency warning, we need every second that we can get. So in this example, sa Japan, during the earthquake, 2013 yata, So while the parliament is uh, having a hearing, they flash to the screen. So the meteorological agency of Japan have already detected uh, the earthquake under the sea. So they're being given the warning before the actual vibration comes to certain cities. Of course, the closer your city is to the epicenter, the faster you will experience the vibration so in this case this is in uh, Fukushima area so in a few more seconds saka lang magkakaroon ng movement dyan sa Tokyo area nasa Tokyo kasi yung parliament so during this time na issue na yung warning and some people are have already received it and will have to take appropriate action. Ayan, nararamdaman na nila. There are people looking up to the chandeliers, etc. And meanwhile, while this automated warning is being issued to everybody, the various news agencies are preparing the flash report. So, if you're taking note of the time before the actual newscast comes in, in this case, Medyo mahaba kasi nangyayari na yung vibration yun. <clears throat> Eventually, this, yeah, it's been cut. Notice the journalist, wala siyang prior briefing. Nagbabasa lang siya ng script. Walang makeup, di ba? Mukhang nagbagunggising lang yata ito eh. So, they're doing the news live. So, mga galaw yung Celia. Yeah, so, mabili silang mag-react dyan. Sa atin siguro medyo matagal. Good evening, Tel Gonzaga. Mayaman na itong babaeng ito eh. Hindi na nagpaparamdang. Okay. Now, after an earthquake, you can expect another type of warning. The earthquake happened uh, sa sea. So, magkakaroon ng tsunami. So, magkakaroon ng secondary warning here ng tsunami. <clears throat> so, antayin lang natin yung part niya. Good evening, Carlo. Para para. It's a long time. Hi, Jill Dean. 
So yung team ko ang nag-handle ng uh, information drive dissemination sa Davao. Isang buwan at kalahati, may gito yung team ko. Uh, ako rin. So yan yung uh, mga scattered cameras ng NHK. Now this one is the tsunami warning. So, hindi siya yung modem na dial-up na tumutunog. But this is actually a tsunami warning. So, papansin nyo, from the tsunami, the whole coastline facing the Pacific, lahat makaka-experience ng certain uh, waves. I think it went up to 5 meters, ang height ng wave. <clears throat> so, the X indicates this epicenter. Ayun, ang 6 meters yung highest. Ah, uh, hindi ko mabasa. So this is the type of capability that we have. We have the technology now. We just have to set up our system fully para dito. So back tayo dito. So what is EWBS? So it's capable of delivering the warning through various mediums. AM, FM, radio, TV, ISDBT. We'll concentrate on ISDBT na lang because that's the fastest way we can do it. Upon detection of the meteorological agency is fed to uh, the broadcasters for immediate transmission. So there are two types of activation. <clears throat> we have the uh, manual wherein a person will look at the screen and then issue the warning or the automatic or in once you get the signal from the agency, your system will transmit it without really interrupting what, what you are watching. So in our case, <clears throat> there's already a working uh, equipment setup. So the EWBS transmission and processing will be in PTV. The detection would be coming from Pagasa, uh, Billbox, MMDA, and various agencies. We call them contributing agencies. Don't so warning. And then uh, the DICT would provide the physical facility to transport all of this information to the Office of Civil Defense. And then Office of Civil Defense will determine uh, what type of warning that can be issued or needs to be issued and um, to whom it shall be issued. I mentioned to whom. If it's a national emergency, the warning will be issued nationwide. But uh, if it's uh, a localized uh, event, then you can choose which areas will get the warning. That's why it is relevant that we take note of the various AWBS codes. So, so for your information, I was the one who coded or provided codes for each cities in national capital region and codes for the various uh, regions or provinces in the country to uh, Ilocos Norte. So the receivers in that area will, will activate. And then the receivers, let's say in... Uh, Ilocosur or uh, Region 2 will not get the warning. So to avoid chaos and panic for areas that, that, that will not be affected by a certain uh, calamity. Okay? The same is true, let's say you want to issue a health warning to Quezon City. So that warning will be effective only to Quezon City residents. Those people in Caloocan, uh, Ikpasi, uh, Toba, Manila, hindi mag-alarm yung mga receivers sila, mga TV, digital TV receivers. Okay? That's what we call the local signaling or selected area signaling for emergency warning broadcast system. So the relevant agencies in the Philippines preparation for the full utilization of emergency warning system I, the Department of Information Communication Technology, uh, the Department of Science and Technology, because under DOSD, yung Pag-asa, Fieldbox, and other agencies, 
the Department of Interior and Local, uh, Local Government and uh, the Office of Civil Defense or the Department of National Defense. So we have this capability now. The technology is here. We just need to prepare those agencies and then train more people on how to maximize the use of this one. Good evening, uh, Director Chris Pomoeka. Unfortunately, hindi pa po fully ready yung mga agencies natin. But uh, hopefully, uh, may magawang uh, progress this year. At least, uh, ma-activate na siya po. <clears throat> So, mga different types of uh, receivers. So, you have the mobile phones with the digital TV tuners. You have the setup boxes. So, we have the generic setup boxes in the market. I don't know if the generic setup boxes have the full compliance already. So, but the TV Plus has the BML. And they're able to do the emergency warning uh, test already. You have the attachments for your uh, gaming device, like uh, PSP, if somebody's still using PSP, and Nintendo DS. Now, in the Philippine market, you can buy uh, setup boxes, TV Plus, Sharp, Win, RCA, HDSD, those kind of stops. But you have the option to buy TVs with built-in digital TV receivers also. So the one I've seen is Yung Sharp has full compliance, so ISDBT features. Uh, Devan, Pensoni, ECL, I think Changhong, Samsung. Uh, there's so many TVs already in the market that has the digital TV. When you buy, you should ask them, does it have the BML and EWDs? Good evening, kapatid na Vicente Buen Consejo. At uh, Sir George uh, Bautista, ang dean ng uh, Piati School of uh, Electrical Engineering and Electronics Communication Engineering. Good evening then, kay Aldrich Quinting, uh, Southeast Asian uh, uh, head ng sales ng Village Island. <coughs> Ito yung sequence ng mga sino na unang nag-transmit ng ISDBT sa Pilipinas. Okay. So, nauna si Gemnet mag-transmit ng, ng high definition and to 2010. And then si PTV. And then si ABS-CBN. And then si TV5. Nag-test na rin ng ISDBT at that time. So, yan yung relevant year. Yung sequencing. So, wala pong politics po yan. Talaga pong yan po yung sequence kung sino yung mga unang nag-transmit ng ISDB. So, kung interesado rin kayo, this map with the uh, indication of the location of the transmission. So, alam nyo naman siguro kung saan kayo nakatira. Titinan nyo sa map. If you're having difficulty receiving your preferred TV, digital TV service, you have to point your antenna to the direction of their transmission. It's quite unfortunate that uh, in our setup here in the Philippines, each broadcaster builds their own transmitter tower uh, or their transmission facility. So um, it becomes more difficult for people to, to receive all of them at the same time. So you have to point your antenna to the direction of their transmission. Yeah. Hindi ka naman in-indicate yung exact uh, longitude, latitude, or coordinates. But it gives you an idea where to point your antenna. So yung mga stations that are doing a digital TV transmission. So... In February 14, 2017, we had what we call the Digital TV Summit uh, organized by the Department of Information Communication Technology. It served as an event for the uh, switchover ceremony from analog to digital. You will notice that there's a lever here. So you have analog 
and then you switch the lever to the other side indicates digital so this is a ceremony wherein it was presided by secret uh, the DICT secretary uh, the NTC commissioner or NTC representative uh, the top executive of ABS-CBN GMA PTV uh, I hope I don't miss GMA ABS PTV TB5 apat uh, pala uh, but they're there the <laughs> key network good evening Mark hi Nash Ayan, si Secretary Salalima. Ayun, kita ko na. So, eto si Chief uh, Finance Officer of GMA Network, uh, Head of DTP of ABS-CBN, Head of PTV, uh, USEC Sarmiento of the ICT. I think this is uh, DEPCOM Cabarios of the NTC, Secretary Salalima. Uh, representative from the Philippine Appliance Association, uh, our guest from the government of Japan, from the Ministry of Information Communication Technology. I think this is Mr. Chot Reyes of TB5. <clears throat> so, I'm going to play lang ulit ako ng video. Dahil pinag-uusapan yung shutdown daw ni ABS, di ba? So, ito po, nag-scan po ako. Uh, I think this was two days ago. I have my test instrument. This is a leader LF990 that allows me to scan the airwaves, analog a, uh, FM, analog TV, and then digital TV. The test was done around, uh, I think, uh, 9.30 in the evening. So, nag-shut off na po yung ABS-CBN analog at that time. So, basically, when I did the channel scan using a simple antenna on my veranda <clears throat> is to determine if digital service of ABS-CBN is still available. And I have a point to prove here. Because in one of the podcasts that I participated in, um, they presented the document of the cease and desist order and it clearly indicates in the order uh, in that order from the NTC which uh, stations needs to shut down so there's no more ABS-CBN channel 2 analog and Amkara however in this scan I noticed that uh, ABS-CBN is still on air so you look there's an ID the network ID, I have a signal lock, okay, it's channel 43, which means this is not part of the cease and desist. So ABS-CBN digital is still on air. Yeah. So I hope that clarifies things. ceremony and then my book again yeah. so it's quite affordable man, for the knowledge that you will earn I think it's around 1,500 pesos I'd like to thank uh, those people who bought my book um, Adamson University uh, Makua Institute of Technology or Makua University the Technological University of the Philippines Si Broadcast World Philippines bought, I think, 12 books. Si 90 Degrees North bought 10 books. Uh, si Engineer uh, Cecil Bautista bought one. Engineer Earl Corna bought one. Uh, si Joel Ong. Uh, si Baba. Madami sila eh. Marami na rin bumili ng libro. So they all bought it from me, so they get the autograph of the three authors of the book. So, yun. 
So, maraming salamat po sa lahat na nag-tune in. At sana po ay nakatulong po sa inyo ang aking live uh, podcast na to, Facebook, para malinawan doon sa diferensya ng channel at ng programa, uh, capacity, etc. Uh, wala po tayong intensyon na i-down po ang iba. Ang objective po natin dito ay magkaroon ng kalinawan lahat. Kasi mas mahirap po ang magsalita ng tungkol sa mga bagay-bagay na kulang po sa kaalaman. So, yun po, nagsishare lang po tayo ng ating kaalaman para po sa mas mapayapang buhay natin lalo ngayon po ay atay naka-quarantine. So, mabuhay po tayo ang mga Pilipino at patuloy lang po ang ating pagtutulungan sa isa't isa. Good night, guys. Oh, may mga tanong pala. Yung Channel 16 ginagamit pa din man ng ABS-CBN. Patay po siya ngayon. Sige po, mag-iwan tayo ng 4 minutes para po 10.40 po tayo alis. Baka po meron kayo mga tanong, willing na kong maghintay. Sagarin na po natin na 1 hour and 25 minutes na live. So, 4 minutes po sa question. Wala po tayong CPD points. Kung nang nagtatanong, tulad ni Algrick, wala po. Certificate, kung gusto niyo po, pwede po tayong gumawa ng certificate. Maraming salamat sa inyo. Hi Pat, kumusta ng interview mo kanina sa CNN Philippines? May pa t-shirt ba? May pa merienda? <laughs> Hi Chrissy. Yung HD radio is not mine. Uh, si Broadcast World Philippines, si Miss Desi Kelly, ang prime mover ng HD radio. Ah, yung issue about CAS or conditional access system. Pansin nyo hindi ko diniscuss dito yung conditional access system because the NTC has yet to make a decision on uh, the application of conditional access in the Philippines. Having that said, Hindi pa na-perform din yung committee that would tackle the details of condition access system. But there are two things that you need to consider when you're going to utilize condition access. Because condition access, a main purpose is to secure your content, to prevent it from being copied, from being viewed illegally. Uh, so yun yung dalawa. The third would be, uh, to provide access to some uh, people uh, na in-authorize mo. Let's say, uh, nagbayad, then you can allow them to watch. But that's uh, the latter uh, portion of purpose ng CAS. First one is secure your content. Parang sa file nyo, in nyo. So, walang pwedeng magbukas ng file nyo. Yung taong pinagbigyan nyo ng password, pwede nyo buksan. Ganun Oh, one minute na lang pala. Good evening, Lian. Uh, no problem, uh, Senen. Ask them on any LU smart app for feed. Uh, I don't know kung tinatanong mo. Sir, ask ko lang po about yung LU. I don't know kung ano LU. Hi, Rosalie. Oo nga, free lecture. Last question siguro to. Ask ko lang sir from John Harold Kasilisihan. Ask ko lang sir yung bang mga channels ng ABS-CBN like Cinemo, EEC, etc. Exclusive. Ay, exclusive TV Plus. Yes. It's exclusive. Glenn Ford Mendez. Given naman yung palagi naman yung CBBS sa STV. By what? But what? Not HDMI. Paano mag i Totoo yan. In order for you to enjoy HD contents, dapat yung output ng box nyo ay HDMI. Kasi if the output you're using is yung yellow RCA plus the red and white connectors audio, 
that's only good for standard decoration. So, yun. 1040 na. At uh, maraming salamat. Sana po ay uh, abangan nyo yung susunod na podcast ko. But this episode will be uploaded sa YouTube channel ko para meron na akong content sa YouTube. So, again, good night, guys, and thank you very much. Good evening, Donnie. JBD.